hello it's Sarah and I'm back I wanted to do another quick video just because I have been crafting and I haven't shared what I'm doing because it's not like terrific it's not great but I do want to share it Oop, my washi tapes coming off there I just decorated this um, birdie sent me some more um, look birdie here's all the the different paper clips she sent me. I just decorated this little file um, folder with some washi. But all right, so I made this is my Midori's Traveler's Notebook, and I have in the front I have drawing paper, and I haven't done anything on that yet, but I am planning on it. And then I've stamped all the Prima doll stamps in this one. Oh, excuse me. I had poured um, iced coffee in for some reason. It's anyway. Um, so I've been watercoloring. And I have painted for years, and I did a little bit of watercoloring. Like, this is just a little simple pattern. Um, I don't know who this is by. Maybe Lynn and Judy, but look, it has a really cool background and stuff. So I really got good at this. Watercoloring, not so much. And so I've been playing with, um, the Frugal Crafter has um, a lot of really good um, watercoloring tutorials. Um, there's plenty, there's plenty out there on um, watercoloring. And I've been trying all the different variations that I have. I, the first one I've been trying lately, or the latest one since my history with painting um, was with the Distress Markers because these are water-based markers. They're the Tim Holtz Distress Markers, for those of you who don't know. Um, they're water-based markers and you can watercolor with these because they react with water. So if I put it down on the paper, watercolor paper, and I've been using to make this book, I used a 90 pound, oops, that's the drawing paper. It's this, I had bought, these were on sale um, at Michael's for very cheap. So I used the 90 pound cold press watercolor paper to make this book with. Um, and I've noticed that when you watch a watercoloring um, tutorial, which there's a couple, I w wish I remembered the names now because there are some really good watercolor artists um, on YouTube. Um, but anyway, so I'm not sure that that makes a huge difference, but I wanna show you what I did. So I think I shared that Maya and I did this, um, we did the mermaid together. So this was my mermaid and I was pretty, this is the one I did with the Tim Holtz markers. And you know, I liked it. It was perfectly fine. I also used the water brush. These are the these are koi water brushes by Sakura, but I had this one forever. I don't even know who this one's by. Oh, it says it on there. I can't read it. Curatake, Curatake Company, something like that. But anyway, so water brushes are out there, and they're they're cool because you don't have to um. You don't even need water, like on the go, you could just bring your water brush filled and you could watercolor. So um, this one turned out pretty cool and I'm gonna start in the back. Um, this I used and I wrote it down. This is this one I did with these little watercolors and I really like this pack. It's by Raphael, this is the packaging. Raphael, I think, Campus. So I don't know, I mean, I got it because it was cheap and I liked the packaging. I liked that it was an on the go type thing and it had this little palette here which I popped out and washed. But the quality is really good of these. Just FYI, um, they're not, they're moist and they make a lot of color and I don't know, I really liked the quality of them. Um, so I used those for these two pages and I hate the background. I absolutely hate it. Like I don't, I have been trying to, I mean, coloring the dolls is kind of easy because you're staying in the lines and, you know, but when I've seen Lindsay, um, the frugal crafter, do a background, there's a couple ways you could do it. You can just wet the whole background and let, and put watercolor and just let it kind of glide across the page like you move the paper and it'll, you know, but like then I tried to make, to ground the the Eiffel Tower with the black and oh I did not like it and I just didn't even put a background on this because I was so discouraged by that but I mean her dress turned out fine you know so let's see what else I have I used um, 
this one I did this this is the same the same water I used these watercolors and I mean I like it it did pretty good I kept it to two colors so I kind of did a green on the bottom and a blue and you know also when you're using these colors you got to make sure that they're not going to turn to mud so that's another thing about color color theory you know but she turned out pretty good kind of painterly um, so I didn't mind that one I kind of like that one let's see now these I used my ink tense pencils and you can kind of tell on this background where I I scribbled with the pencil you can see the pencil lines but it did break down once I put water over it 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 did spread the color but that's how I did this one. I just put the color where I wanted it with the pencil. And obviously I grabbed the orange for her skin. It looks kind of skin tony, but it's called burnt orange. So I made that mistake. But um, so I mean, but I like I like the way um, how easy it is to work with the pencils too. Like they're really easy because you just put the color where you want it and then add the water and it just, it, it's pretty easy. I liked it, and this one too. I mean, you can still, like I said, you can see the lines a little bit where I scribbled the color on to do the background. And then again, I don't know why I like, feel like I need to do more than one color, but I think it's just cause I'm playing and I'm loving orange and pink. So, I mean, it's not, it's not horrible, but I'm still, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to be doing. Like that's, kind of where I'm at. Again, it's one of those learning curves. Um, I mean, not horrible. I used the campus again. So these are the real watercolors. So what's happening with this one is I'm mixing the color over here. So I take a little out and put it over here. So I have a puddle of color instead of applying it with just like a, a, br a marker or a pencil. I'm applying it m with a brush, much more watery and stuff. So, but like you can see like a lot more of the um it's kind of got a more drippy watery look to it um and this one i definitely like you can see where i probably turned it upside down and let the orange run down um so it's fun like i think i should stamp a book of um flowers i think i'm gonna do flowers next time because i think they can be a little more modeled looking you know like you don't want these girls to be like look at this background that's again with the real watercolors and i was trying to get i probably i think i wet the background first on this one so the paper was wet and then i added the color to it wet too so um i'm not really fe like f feeling that with enough control, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I feel like that's a little out of control and you know, I'm a pretty, um, I'm a simpler, I don't know. It seems like it's a little too random for me that the way the background turns out. This one's okay, like I don't hate it, but I only use two colors of blue, like more of a turquoise blue and then like a blue, a regular blue. So that looks pretty. Again, I think it, it might come down to, um, color mixing like knowing what colors mix well so yeah so i've been playing in my little book i just wanted to um share that with you guys i've also been doing the listers got a list challenge so i have um i'm working on april and may but i'm up to date and i did just get some um some things from joann's because i wanted to try these um, ephemera packs to decorate my pages with. So I got a few of those. These mini pockets are super cool. Can't wait to try them. Um, and a couple of pattern papers, little pattern papers to play with. Um, so that's what I've been up to in that area. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.